our PBL, or project-based lesson, was to make an earthquake-resistant structure and a device that would act as an earthquake. But before we did that, we had to learn about earthquakes. An earthquake is caused by tectonic plates hitting each other. We looked up important terms like seismic waves and tectonic plates. A tectonic plate is like the puzzle pieces under the earth. When they hit each other, they create an earthquake. Seismic waves are the waves of energy that come to the Earth's surface when these tectonic plates hit. There are four types of seismic waves. The first is primary waves. These are the first waves to hit the surface. These waves hit the surface in a back and forth motion, making the ground go back and forth. The second type of seismic wave is a secondary wave. A secondary wave hits after the primary waves. It makes the ground move up and down. Next, we have a Rayleigh wave. The Rayleigh waves move the ground in a rolling motion, much like the waves in an ocean. Lastly is the love waves. These waves move in a side-to-side -side motion. Some other important terms are epicenter and focus. The epicenter is the point on the Earth's surface directly above the focus. The focus is the point along a fault at which the first motion of an earthquake occurs. Finally, one of the most important terms was base isolation. Base isolation is when a building is somehow disconnected from the ground to observe an Earth's energy waves. After we found out about earthquakes, we had to design our shake table and our earthquake resistant structure. The brown board in the picture represents the Earth's surface. The springs underneath it act as the earthquake's waves. The type of energy waves we are representing are Rayleigh waves. They are the waves that move in a rolling motion. When we push down on the brown board, the building on top will go up and down and may even fall down. So we had to make ours not collapse. Our structure is made out of attachable beams and columns, models that, modeled as the Bank of America in San Francisco, California. At the bottom, you can see a set of springs. The springs elevate the building so that it doesn't touch the ground. You may remember that this is called base isolation. The springs absorb the wave's energy and doesn't cause as much damage. When we tested our earthquake resistance structure, we were happy with the results. Our building did not fall. The building did, not, the building did move a little, but the springs absorbed most of the waves, so the building did not collapse. Our structure did exactly what we wanted it to do. It stayed standing, and the springs absorbed most of the earthquake's waves. We made a list of the pros and cons of our design. The pros were that our building didn't collapse and that the springs worked as base isolation, and the building didn't move. We did have some cons, though. The building was kind of wobbly, and our shake table didn't produce a very strong earthquake. If we put our structure anywhere in the world after then San Francisco, California, our structure would still work. Base isolation works anywhere, but if the earthquake was more strong, the building would collapse. In conclusion, our structure was fairly resistant to our earthquake and base isolation worked.